Viktor Fedorovich Yanukovych, Russian, Romanized, Viktor Fyodorovich Yanukovych, born July 9, 1950, is a former politician who served as the fourth president of Ukraine from 2010 until he was removed from office in the Revolution of Dignity in 2014, after a long series of protests in support of closer ties with the European Union by diverse civil society groups in response to his rejection of the Ukrainian-European Association Agreement. From 2006 to 2007 he was the Prime Minister of Ukraine. He also served in this post from November 2002 to January 2005, with a short interruption in December 2004. He currently lives in exile in Russia, where he has lived since his removal from office in 2014. Yanukovych served as the governor of Donetsk Oblast, a province in eastern Ukraine, from 1997 to 2002. He was Prime Minister of Ukraine from November 21, 2002 to December 7, 2004 and from December 28, 2004 to January 5, 2005, under President Leonid Kukma. Yanukovych first ran for president in 2004, he advanced to the runoff election and was initially declared the winner against former Prime Minister Viktor Yushchenko. However, the election was fraught with allegations of electoral fraud and voter intimidation. This caused widespread citizen protests and Kyiv's Independence Square was occupied in what became known as the Orange Revolution. The Ukrainian Supreme Court nullified the runoff election and ordered a second runoff. Yanukovych lost this second election to Yushchenko. He served as Prime Minister for a second time from August 4, 2006 to December 18, 2007, under President Yushchenko. Yanukovych was elected President in 2010, defeating Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko. The election was judged free and fair by international observers. In November 2013 a series of events started that led to his ousting as President. Yanukovych rejected a pending EU association agreement, choosing instead to pursue a Russian loan bailout and closer ties with Russia. This led to protests and the occupation of Kyiv's Independence Square, a series of events dubbed the Euromaidan by proponents of aligning Ukraine toward the European Union. In January 2014, this developed into deadly clashes in Independence Square and in other areas across Ukraine as Ukrainian citizens confronted the Burkut and other special police units. In February 2014, Ukraine appeared to be on the brink of civil war, as violent clashes between protesters and special police forces led to many deaths and injuries. On February 21, 2014, Yanukovych claimed that, after lengthy discussions, he had reached an agreement with the opposition. Later that day, however, he left the capital for Kharkiv, saying his car was shot at as he left Kyiv, and traveling next to Crimea, and eventually to exile in southern Russia. On February 22, 2014, the Ukrainian parliament voted to remove him from his post and schedule new elections on the grounds that he has restrained himself from performing his constitutional duties and effectively resigned rather than by following the impeachment process for criminal acts under Article 108 of the Ukrainian Constitution. Parliament set May 25 as the date for the special election to select his replacement, and, two days later, issued a warrant for his arrest, accusing him of mass killing of civilians. After his departure, Yanukovych conducted several press conferences. In one of these, he declared himself to remain the legitimate head of the Ukrainian state elected in a free vote by Ukrainian citizens. On June 18, 2015, Yanukovych was officially deprived of the title of president by the parliament. On January 24, 2019, he was sentenced in absentia to 13 years imprisonment for high treason by a Ukrainian court. In social polls conducted since his departure from office, Yanukovych is regarded as the worst president in Ukrainian history. Early life and early career 
Viktor Yanukovych was born in the village of Zukovka near Yenikiev in Donetsk Oblast, Ukrainian SSR, Soviet Union. He endured a very hard childhood about which he has stated. Yanukovych is of Russian, Polish, and Belarusian descent. Yanukovych is a surname of Belarusian origin, Yanuk being a derivative of the Catholic name Yan. His mother was a Russian nurse and his father, Fyodor Yanukovych, was a Polish-Belarusian locomotive driver, originally from Yanuki in the Dokshitsi rayon of the Vitebsk region which is in present-day Belarus. On various occasions, Yanukovych's family has been dogged by accusations that Fyodor Yanukovych was a member of the Skutsmanskaft during World War II, in particular claims by members of the Yulia Timoshenko bloc, which included documents from the NKVD supposedly revealing his involvement with the Skutsmanskaft. However, it has also been stated by residents of Yanuki that Yanukovych's family left for the Donbass before 1917 and that the collaborator Fyodor Yanukovych was an unrelated individual. Others, particularly members of the Party of Regions, have claimed that the documents were a falsehood with the intention of disparaging Yanukovych ahead of elections. By the time he was a teenager, Yanukovych's father had remarried. However, Victor left home due to conflicts with his stepmother, and was brought up by his Polish paternal grandmother, originally from Warsaw. His grandfather and great-grandparents were Lithuanian Poles. Yanukovych has half-sisters from his father's remarriage, but has no contact with them. On December 15, 1967, at the age of 17, Yanukovych was sentenced to three years' imprisonment for participating in a robbery and assault. On June 8, 1970 he was convicted for a second time on charges of assault. He was sentenced to two years of imprisonment and did not appeal the verdict. Decades later, Yanukovych characterized his arrests and imprisonment as mistakes of youth. In 1971, Yanukovych married Lyudmila Nastenko, a niece of Yanukiyeva city judge Oleksandr Sishin. In July 1974, Yanukovych enrolled at the Donetsk Polytechnic Institute. In 1976, as a second year student, he was promoted to director of a small trucking division within the Orjanika Jirigol Coal Mining Company. His appointment as the chief manager marked the start of his managerial career as a regional transport executive. He held various positions in transport companies in Yenikiev and Donetsk until 1996. Political Career, 1996-2010 Yanukovych's political career began when he was appointed as a vice head of Donetsk Oblast administration in August 1996. On May 14, 1997, he was appointed as the head of the administration. Prime Minister President Leonid Kukma appointed Yanukovych to the post of Prime Minister following Anatoly Ikenaka's resignation. Yanukovych began his term as Prime Minister on November 21, 2002 following a 234 vote confirmation in the Verkhovna Rada, eight more than needed. In foreign affairs, Yanukovych's cabinet was considered to be politically close to Russia, although declaring support for Ukrainian membership in the European Union. Although Yanukovych's parliamentary coalition was not supporting Ukrainian membership in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, his cabinet agreed to the commission of Ukrainian troops to the Iraq War in support of the United States War on Terrorism. 2004 Presidential Campaign In 2004, as the Prime Minister, Yanukovych participated in the controversial Ukrainian presidential election as the Party of Regions candidate. Yanukovych's main base of support emerged from the southern and eastern regions of Ukraine, which favor close ties with neighboring Russia. In the first round of voting held on October 31, 2004, Yanukovych took second place with 39.3% of the votes to opposition leader Viktor Yuskenko with 39.8%. Because no candidate passed the 50% threshold, a second round of voting was scheduled. In the second round of the election, Yanukovych was initially declared the winner. However, 
the legitimacy of the election was questioned by many Ukrainians, international organizations, and foreign governments following allegations of electoral fraud. The resulting widespread protests became known as the Orange Revolution. The second round of the election was subsequently annulled by the Supreme Court of Ukraine, and in the repeated runoff, Yanukovych lost to Yushchenko with 44.2% to Yushchenko's 51.9%. After the election, the Ukrainian parliament passed a non binding motion of no confidence in Yanukovych's government, urging outgoing President Leonid Kukma to dismiss Yanukovych and appoint a caretaker government. Five days after his electoral defeat, Yanukovych declared his resignation from the post of Prime Minister. In November 2009 Yanukovych stated that he conceded defeat only to avoid violence. I didn't want mothers to lose their children and wives their husbands. I didn't want dead bodies from Kyiv to flow down the Dnipro. I didn't want to assume power through bloodshed. After the Orange Revolution Following his electoral defeat in 2004, Yanukovych led the main opposition party against the Timoshenko government made up of Yushchenko's R. Ukraine, the Yulia Timoshenko bloc, and Alexander Moroz's Socialist Party. This government was marred by growing conflict between Yushchenko and Timoshenko. Yanukovych's party of regions support allowed for the establishment of Yuri Yekinurov's government in late 2005. In October 2004, Ukrainian deputy Hryhori Amalchenko accused Yanukovych of having been a member of a group of individuals who brutally beat and raped a woman, but bought off the victim and the criminal case was closed. The press service of the Ukrainian cabinet asserted that Yanukovych suffered for the attempt to defend a girl from hooligans. In 2005, the Party of Regions signed a collaboration agreement with the Russian political party United Russia. In 2008, Yanukovych spoke at a Congress of the United Russia Party. 2006-2007 Elections and Second Premiership In January 2006, the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine started an official investigation of the allegedly false acquittal of the criminal convictions which Yanukovych received in his youth. Yuri Lutsenko, the head of the ministry, announced that forensic tests proved the forgery of the respective documents and initially claimed that lack of the formal acquittal precluded Yanukovych from running for the seat in the 2006 parliamentary election. However, the latter statement was corrected within days by Lutsenko himself who conceded that the outcome of the investigation into the legality of the Yanukovych's acquittal could not affect his eligibility to run for the parliament's seat. Since the deprivation of his civil rights due to the past convictions would have expired anyway due to the statute of limitations. Viktor Yanukovych's party of regions won the 2006 Ukrainian parliamentary election. In 2006, a criminal charge was made for the falsification of documents regarding the retraction of Yanukovych's prior conviction. According to Rossi Skaya Gazeta two documents had been forged regarding Yanukovych's robbery in association with rape and assault and battery. The signature of the judge for these documents in Yanukovych's retraction was also forged. On May 25, 2007, Viktor Yanukovych was assigned the post of appointed chairman of the Government Chiefs Council of the Commonwealth of Independent States. Presidential Campaign and Election in 2009, Yanukovych announced his intent to run for president in the then upcoming presidential election. He was endorsed by the Party of Regions and the Youth Party of Ukraine. Minister of Internal Affairs Yuri Lutsenko accused Yanukovych of financial fraud during the campaign. Yanukovych's campaign was expected to have cost $100 to $150 million. On December 11, 2009, Yanukovych called for his supporters to go to Maidan Nezaleznosti, Kyiv's Independence Square, in case of election fraud. Early vote returns from the first round of the election held on January 17 showed Yanukovych in first place with 35.8% of the vote. He faced a February 7, 2010 runoff against Timoshenko, who finished second. After all ballots were counted, 
the Ukrainian Central Election Commission declared that Yanukovych won the runoff election with 48.95% of the vote compared with 45.47% for Tymoshenko. Election observers from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe said there were no indications of serious fraud and described the vote as an impressive display of democracy. Tymoshenko withdrew her subsequent legal challenge of the result. Tad Devine, an associate of Rick Gates and Paul Manafort, wrote Yanukovych's victory speech. Presidency Inauguration Ukraine's parliament had fixed February 25, 2010 for the inauguration of Yanukovych as president. Ukrainian President Viktor Yushchenko signed a decree endorsing a plan of events related to Yanukovych's inauguration on February 20, 2010. Yushchenko also congratulated and wished Yanukovych to defend Ukrainian interests and democratic traditions at the presidential post. Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Rus at Yanukovych's invitation conducted a public prayer service at Kyiv Petrsk Lavra before Yanukovych's presidential inauguration. Patriarch Kirill also attended the inauguration along with High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Catherine Ashton. United States National Security Advisor James Jones and Speaker of the Russian Parliament Boris Grislov. Yanukovych's immediate predecessor, Yushchenko, did not attend the ceremony, nor did the Prime Minister, Yulia Tymoshenko, and her party, Bloc Yulia Tymoshenko. First Days On March 3, 2010, Yanukovych suspended his membership in the Party of Regions as he was barred by the Constitution from heading a political party while president, and handed over leadership in the party and its parliamentary faction to Mykola Azarav. On new alliances Yanukovych said, Ukraine's integration with the EU remains our strategic aim, with a balanced policy, which will protect our national interests both on our eastern border I mean with Russia and of course with the European Union. According to Yanukovych, Ukraine must be a neutral state which should be part of a collective defense system which the European Union, NATO, and Russia will take part in. Yanukovych wants Ukraine to neither join NATO nor the CSTO. He stated on January 7, 2010 that Ukraine is ready to consider an initiative by Dmitry Medvedev on the creation of a new Europe collective security system stating and we're ready to back Russia's and France's initiatives. Yanukovych stated during the 2010 presidential election campaign that the current level of Ukraine's cooperation with NATO was sufficient and that the question of the country's accession to the alliance was therefore not urgent. The Ukrainian people don't currently support Ukraine's entry to NATO and this corresponds to the status that we currently have. We don't want to join any military bloc. On May 27, 2010 President Yanukovych stated he considered Ukraine's relations with NATO as a partnership, and Ukraine can't live without this, because Ukraine is a large country. In early November 2011, Yanukovych claimed that arms are being bought in the country and armed attacks on government agencies are being prepared. These claims were met with disbelief. 2012 Presidential Prediction S4 2012 Yanukovych predicted social standards will continue to grow and improvement of administrative services system will continue. Yanukovych announced $2 billion worth of pension and other welfare increases on March 7, 2012. Constitutional Assembly In May 2012, Yanukovych set up the Constitutional Assembly of Ukraine, a special auxiliary agency under the President for drawing up bills of amendments to the Constitution of Ukraine, the President then can table them in Parliament. Presidential Powers of Appointment Domestic Policy Amid controversy Ukrainian lawmakers formed a new coalition on March 11, 2010 which included Bloc Lytvyn, Communist Party of Ukraine and Party of Regions that led to the Azarav government. 235 deputies from the 450-member parliament signed the coalition agreement. Financial Policy Tax Code Domestic Spending versus Debt Energy policy Russian gas 
downgrading uranium stock. Cultural policy. East slash West Ukraine unification. Holodomer. Russian as an official language. Religion. Social policy. Foreign policy. Yanukovych's first foreign visit was to Brussels to visit the President of the European Council, Herman Van Rompuy, and the EU Foreign Affairs Chief, Catherine Ashton. During the visit Yanukovych stated that there would be no change to Ukraine's status as a member of the NATO outreach program. During his second foreign visit to Moscow in March, Yanukovych vowed to end years of acrimony with Russia saying that ties between Russia and Ukraine should never be the way they were for the past five years. He indicated that he was open to compromise with Russia on the Black Sea Fleet's future, and reiterated that Ukraine would remain a European, non-aligned state, referring to NATO membership. Both Russian President Dmitry Medvedev and Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin soon stated they noticed a big improvement in relations with Ukraine since Yanukovych's presidency. On June 3, 2010, the Ukrainian parliament excluded, in a bill written by Yanukovych, with 226 votes, Ukrainian membership of any military bloc, but allowed for cooperation with military alliances such as NATO. A day later Yanukovych stated that the recognition of the independence of Abkhazia, South Ossetia and Kosovo violates international law. I have never recognized Abkhazia, South Ossetia, or Kosovo's independence. This is a violation of international law. On November 22, 2010, the European Council and Ukraine announced an action plan for Ukraine toward the establishment of a visa free regime for short stay travel. In May 2011, Yanukovych stated that he would strive for Ukraine to join the EU. Yanukovych's stance towards integration with the EU, according to The Economist, led him to be seen in Moscow as a traitor, a reversal of the 2004 presidential election where Moscow openly supported Yanukovych. Alleged attempt to remove opposition President Yanukovych and the Party of Regions were accused of trying to create a controlled democracy in Ukraine and as a means to this were trying to destroy main opposition party Byut but both denied these charges. One frequently cited example of Yanukovych's attempts to centralize power is the 2011 sentencing of Yulia Tymoshenko, which was condemned by Western governments as potentially being politically motivated. Other high-profile political opponents under criminal investigation include Leonid Kukma, Bogdan Danilishin, Igor Didenko, Anatoly Imakarenko, and Valery Ivaschenko. According to Yanukovych, any lies told and attempts made to misinform the international community and ordinary people in Ukraine about the true state of affairs in the country. He also stated, crushing blow delivered under rule to corruption and bureaucracy has been met with resistance. He stated in February 2012 that the trial of Tymoshenko and other former officials didn't meet European standards and principles. Press censorship allegation. As president, Yanukovych stated in early February 2010 that he would support the freedom of speech of journalists and protect their interests. During spring 2010 Ukrainian journalists and reporters without borders complained of censorship by Yanukovych's presidential administration, despite statements by Yanukovych how deeply he valued press freedom and that free, independent media that must ensure society's unimpeded access to information anonymous journalists stated early May 2010 that they were voluntarily tailoring their coverage so as not to offend the Yanukovych administration and the Azarav government. The Azarav government, the presidential administration and Yanukovych himself denied being involved with censorship. In a press conference May 12, 2010 President Yanukovych's representative in the Verkhovna Rada Yuri Moroshnikenko stated that Yanukovych was against political repression for criticism of the regime. Crimean Naval Base On April 21, 2010, in Kharkiv, Yanukovych and Dmitry Medvedev, the Russian president, signed the 2010 Ukrainian-Russian Naval Base for Natural Gas Treaty 
whereby the Russian lease on naval facilities in Crimea would be extended beyond 2017 by 25 years with an additional five-year renewal option in exchange for a multi-year discounted contract to provide Ukraine with Russian natural gas. This treaty was approved by both the Russian and Ukrainian parliaments on April 27, 2010. On April 22, 2010, Yanukovych stated he did not rule out the possibility of holding a referendum on the stationing of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Ukraine after the necessary legislative framework is adopted for this in future. Yanukovych did plan to hold plebiscites also on other subjects. Opposition members accused Yanukovych of selling out national interests. According to Yanukovych, the main priority of his foreign policy was to integrate Ukraine into the European mainstream, while improving relations with Russia. According to Yanukovych, the only way to lower the state budget deficit, as requested by the International Monetary Fund, while protecting pensioners and minimal wages was to extend the Russian Navy lease in Crimea in exchange for cheaper natural gas. 2012 Parliamentary Elections In 2012, during the Ukrainian parliamentary elections of that year, Yanukovych's party of regions won the poll with 30% against 25.5% for imprisoned Yulia Tymoshenko's Fatherland Party. Background to Removal Euromaidan Protests The Euromaidan protests started in November 2013 when Ukrainian citizens demanded stronger integration with the European Union. The origins of Euromaidan began as a smaller protest that had started in Independence Square in the center of Kyiv on November 21, the day Yanukovych abruptly changed his mind on an association agreement with the European Union deciding to strengthen economic ties with Russia instead. The protesters refused to leave the square until their demands were met. These included items that the government should release jailed protesters, sign the EU agreement, and change the constitution of Ukraine, and that Yanukovych should resign. The protesters were attacked by police, resulting in civil unrest across western Ukraine. Yanukovych dismissed this as the work of his political opponents, instead, protesters called all the more for his resignation, saying he was aloof and unresponsive. Violence escalated after January 16, 2014 when Yanukovych signed the bondarenko olenik laws, also known as anti-protest laws. Demonstrators occupied provincial administration buildings in at least ten regions sending the police fleeing through rear exits in some instances. Verkhovna Rada lawmakers repealed nine of the twelve restrictive laws that had been passed on January 16 by a show of hands, without debate. Outrage ensued at the limits the laws imposed on free speech and assembly in the country. In a striking concession aimed at defusing Ukraine's civil uprising and preserving his own grip on power, President Yanukovych offered to install opposition leaders in top posts in a reshaped government, but they swiftly rebuffed the offer to the delight of thousands of protesters on the streets craving a fuller victory in the days ahead. Mykola Azarav, the Prime Minister of Ukraine, resigned on January 28. In a statement he wrote that he was resigning for the sake of a peaceful resolution to the civil unrest. Talks with Yanukovych failed in February 2014. And, according to the President of Russia Vladimir Putin, Ukraine appeared to be on the brink of civil war. Twenty-eight protesters had been killed, including seven policemen and a civilian bystander, with 335 injured, on February 18 and dozens of others on February 20 in bloody clashes in Kyiv. In June 2015 interview with BBC News Night Yanukovych stated that he never ordered the security forces to open fire, but he has also claimed he had not done enough to prevent bloodshed. He claimed the members of the security forces fulfilled their duties according to existing laws. They had the right to use weapons. Reports of Corruption and Cronyism Yanukovych has been widely criticized for massive corruption and cronyism. By January 2013, more than half of the ministers appointed by Yanukovych were either born in the Donbass region or made some crucial part of their careers there, 
and Yanukovych has been accused of regional cronyism for his staffing of police, judiciary, and tax services all over Ukraine with Donbass people. Over 46% of the budget subventions for social and economic development was allotted to the Donbass region's Donetsk Oblast and Luhansk Oblast administrations 0.62 billion UAH versus 0.71 billion UAH for the rest of the country. Anders Islund, a Swedish economist and Ukraine analyst, described the consolidation of Ukrainian economic power in the hands of a few elite industrial tycoons one of the richest and most influential of whom has become President Yanukovych's own son Alexander. Yanukovych The exact distribution of wealth and precise weight of influence are difficult to gauge, but most of the country's richest men were afraid to cross the Yanukovych family, even in cases where their own economic interests favored an economically pro-EU Ukraine. The Yanukovych family, a group of young businessmen described as robber capitalists, have been buying up both public and private businesses at rock-bottom prices available in the stagnating economic conditions brought on by Yanukovych's economic policies. According to Islund, one notable exception to the Yanukovych family's influence was Petro Poroshenko, who is described as uncommonly courageous, although his confectionery empire is less susceptible to ruin by the substantial power the Yanukovych family wielded in the heavy industry sectors located in Yanukovych's geographic power base of Donetsk. Yanukovych had an estimated net worth of $12 billion, and has been accused by Ukrainian officials of misappropriating funds from Ukraine's treasury. Arseniy Yitzhanyuk has claimed that treasury funds of up to $70 billion were transferred to foreign accounts during Yanukovych's presidency. Authorities in Switzerland, Austria, and Liechtenstein froze the assets of Yanukovych and his son Alexander on February 28, 2014 pending a money laundering investigation. Yanukovych has denied that he embezzled funds and has said that his alleged foreign accounts do not exist. During the presidency of Viktor Yanukovych, at least 7,000 Ukrainian companies were attacked by the oligarchic clan of Yanukovych. This number includes both cases of the so-called family entering the corporate rights of the firms they like by illegal methods, and assaults in order to obtain tribute that is, commercial gain. This is evidenced by the data of the Anti-Raider Union of Entrepreneurs of Ukraine. The victims of Yanukovych's raider methods were offered to pay a regular tribute in the amount of 30-50% of the company's profits or to cede ownership of it. Personal Excesses Yanukovych abandoned his large estate, Meshihirya when he fled the capital. The estate is located in a former forest preserve on the outskirts of Kyiv. He had acquired the property in 2007, according to critics through a convoluted series of companies and transactions. Yanukovych did not reveal the price he paid, although he called it a very serious price. Meshihirya is estimated to have been sold for more than 75 million US dollars. Protesters walked unchallenged into the former president's office and residential compounds after police and security left their posts in Kyiv. Protesters had free access to government buildings and to the presidential mansion and estate. They were amazed at the opulence and extravagance of what they found, including a private zoo, a fleet of cars, and a large boat. In a feature with photos on Yanukovych's Meshihirya mansion, Sergei Leshchenko notes for most of career he was a public servant or parliament deputy, where his salary never exceeded US$2,000 per month. Under a photo showing the new home's ornate ceiling, Leshenko remarks, in a country where 35% of the population live under poverty line, spending $100,000 on each individual chandelier seems excessive, to say the least. Crowned with a pure copper roof, the mansion was the largest wooden structure ever created by Finnish log home builder Honka, whose representative suggested to Yanukovych that it be nominated for the Guinness Book of Records. The property contained a private zoo underground shooting range, 18-hole golf course, tennis, and bowling. After describing the mansion's complicated ownership scheme, the article author noted, 
the story of Viktor Yanukovych and his residence highlights a paradox. Having completely rejected such European values as human rights and democracy, the Ukrainian president uses Europe as a place to hide his dirty money with impunity. Documents recovered from Yanukovych's compound show among other expenses $800 medical treatment for fish, $14,500 spent on tablecloths, and a nearly $42 million order for light fixtures. Also recovered were files on Yanukovych's perceived enemies, especially media members, including beating victim Tatyana Kurnoval. The cost of monitoring the mass media was reportedly $5.7 million just for the month of December 2010. When the former president departed, 35 cars and 7 motorbikes were left behind. Kyiv's district court seized 27 vintage cars in 2016 from the fleet stationed at Meshihirya, some worth more than $US 1 million. Yanukovych told BBC Newsnight that stories that Meshihirya cost the Ukrainian taxpayer millions of dollars were political technology and spin and that the estate did not belong to him personally. He claimed that the ostriches in the residence's petting zoo just happened to be there and remarked I supported the ostriches, what's wrong with that? Accusations of police abuse and vote rigging Yanukovych's refusal to sign a trade association agreement with Western Europe originated massive protests that culminated in the murder of 88 demonstrators between the 20 and February 22, 2014. The treaty was signed on May 29, 2014, after his removal. Yanukovych has been accused, by among others, of using the burqa to threaten, attack, and torture Ukrainian protesters. The burqa, disbanded on February 25, 2014, were a controversial national police force under his personal command and were accused of promoting Russian interests. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe confirmed witness accounts of voters being blocked from access to polls and being attacked along with local election officials who tried to frustrate the Burkut's practice of falsifying voters' ballots in favor of Yanukovych's party of regions candidates. Individual cases have been reported of citizens grouping together and fighting back against the burqa in order to preserve election integrity and results. Upon coming to power Yanukovych had reversed oversight measures established during the Yushchenko administration to restrain the burqa's abuse of citizens whereupon the special force upped its brutality. Removal from Presidency Parliamentary Vote on Friday, February 21, 2014, an agreement between President Yanukovych and the leaders of the parliamentary opposition was signed that called for early elections and the formation of an interim unity government. The following day, Yanukovych fled from the capital ahead of an impeachment vote. The vote took place on February 22, 2014, 328 of 447 members of the Ukrainian parliament or about 73% of the MPs voted to remove Viktor Yanukovych from the post of President of Ukraine on the grounds that he was unable to fulfill his duties and to hold early presidential elections on May 25. The vote came an hour after Yanukovych said in a televised address that he would not resign. He subsequently declared himself to still be the legitimate head of the Ukrainian state elected in a free vote by Ukrainian citizens. The constitutionality of Yanukovych's removal from office has been questioned by constitutional experts. According to Daisy Sindelar from Radio Free Europe, the impeachment may have not followed the procedure provided by the Constitution. T is not clear that the hasty February 22 vote upholds constitutional guidelines which call for a review of the case by Ukraine's Constitutional Court and a three-fourths majority vote by the Verkhovna Rada i.e., 338 lawmakers. The vote, as analyzed by Sindelar, had ten votes less than those required by the constitutional guidelines. However, Sindelar noted in the same article that, that discrepancy may soon become irrelevant, with Parliament expected to elect a new Prime Minister no later than February 24. 
the decision to remove Yanukovych was supported by 328 deputies. Although the legislative removal by an impeachment procedure would have lacked the number of votes required by Ukraine's constitution, the resolution did not follow the impeachment procedure but instead established that Yanukovych withdrew from his duties in an unconstitutional manner and cited circumstances of extreme urgency a situation for which there was no stipulation in the then-current Ukrainian constitution. Point two days. Later Ukraine's parliament dismissed five judges of the constitutional court for allegedly violating their oaths, who were then investigated for alleged malpractice. Yanukovych maintained that his replacement was a coup and continued to make statements from an official perspective. On the same day that parliament removed Yanukovych from office, it voted to authorize the release of his rival Yulia Tymoshenko from a prison hospital. She had been imprisoned since 2011, in what many saw as political payback by Yanukovych. Her release had been an unmet condition for Ukraine's signing of a European Union trade pact. Disavowal by party Yanukovych was eventually disowned by the Party of Regions. In a statement issued by Alexandr Yefremov, Parliamentary faction leader, the party, and its members strongly condemn the criminal orders that led to human victims, an empty state treasury, huge debts, shame before the eyes of the Ukrainian people and the entire world. Leaving Kyiv Yanukovych left Kyiv during the night of February 21, 2014 and initially moved to Kharkiv. According to then-governor of Kharkiv Oblast, Mikhailo Dobkin, Yanukovych had intended to make his stay in Kharkiv look like just another presidential inspection tour and according to Dobkin, was desperate to make it look like he wasn't running away. Yanukovych asked Dobkin to pick out a few factories for me to visit, the director of state-owned industrial giant Turbo Atom declined even to take his call. Dobkin met Yanukovych at Kharkiv International Airport after midnight. According to Dobkin at that time Yanukovych thought this was a temporary difficulty since he believed that the February 21 deal he had signed with opposition leaders could still provide for a graceful departure of his power later in the year. Dobkin's impression of Yanukovych was a guy on another planet. In his press conference in Rostov-on-Don on February 28, Yanukovych claimed that at the time he did not flee anywhere but that his car was shot at by automatic rifles as he left Kyiv for Kharkiv to meet the representatives of local parties and he was then forced to move around Ukraine amid fears for the safety of himself and his family. When we arrived in Kharkiv, on the early morning of February 22, the security service started to receive information that radical groups were arriving in Kharkiv. According to an April 2014 poll conducted by the Razumkov Center, only 4.9% of respondents would have liked to see Yanukovych return to the presidency. Arriving in Russia According to the Ukrainian State Border Service, Yanukovych tried to flee via a charter flight from Donetsk, but was stopped by border guards. Both Putin and Yanukovych later stated that Russian forces helped Yanukovych to fly to Russia on February 24, 2014. On February 26, 2014, Russian media company RBC reported Yanukovych's presence in Moscow. According to RBC sources, Yanukovych arrived at the Radisson Royal Hotel, Moscow on the night of February 25, 2014. Then he moved to the Barvaka Sanatorium, the health resort of the President of Russia in Moscow Oblast. ROS Business Consulting also reported sightings of Viktor Pshinksa, a former Prosecutor General of Ukraine in the Hall of Radisson Royal Hotel. The press secretary of the department that manages Barvaka Sanatorium denied the report, stating that he had no information of Yanukovych settled in Barvaka Sanatorium. Exile According to Russian politician Oleg Mitval, Yanukovych bought a house in Barvaka for $52 million on February 26, 2014. On February 27, a report stated that Yanukovych had asked the authorities of the Russian Federation to guarantee his personal security in the territory of Russia, a request that they accepted. 
Yanukovych claimed that the decisions of the Ukrainian parliament adopted in the atmosphere of extremist threats are unlawful and he remains the legal president of Ukraine. He accused the opposition of violation of the February 21 agreements and asked the armed forces of Ukraine not to intervene in the crisis. The exact whereabouts of Yanukovych when he made this statement was unclear. In a June 2015 interview with BBC's Newsnight he thanked Russian President Vladimir Putin for saving his life. In an April 2014 poll by Kyiv International Institute of Sociology those polled in southern and eastern Ukraine were generally split on the legitimacy of the then Yatsenyuk government and parliament, but a majority in all regions agreed that Yanukovych was not the legal president of the country. On October 3, 2014, Several news agencies reported that according to a Facebook post made by the aide to the Ukrainian interior minister, Anton Geshenko, Viktor Yanukovych had been granted Russian citizenship by a secret decree of Vladimir Putin. On the same day, Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that he didn't know anything about this. On November 26, 2015, Yanukovych received a temporary asylum certificate in Russia for one year, later extended until November 2017. In October 2017, this was extended to another year. According to his lawyer Yanukovych did not consider acquiring Russian citizenship or a permanent residence permits but only a temporary shelter for returning to the territory of Ukraine. In 2017, Russian media suggested that Yanukovych is apparently living in Bakovka near Moscow, in a residence owned by Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs. Position of Yanukovych on his removal In a press conference in Rostov-on-Don on February 28, 2014, Yanukovych stated that all his possessions had been legally declared and accounted for. The same day Swiss and Austrian authorities blocked Yanukovych's and his associates' assets, and launched a corruption investigation. Yanukovych said that an armed coup had taken place in Ukraine, and that he was still the legitimate president because there had been no impeachment, resignation, or death. On March 11, he claimed he should return to Ukraine as soon as this was possible. Yanukovych stated he had been able to escape to Russia thanks to patriotic officers who did their duty and helped me stay alive. In the press conference he stated that he was still president of Ukraine and I can't find words to characterize this new authority. These are people who advocate violence the Ukrainian parliament is illegitimate. He described the new Ukrainian authorities as pro-fascist thugs and that they represent the absolute minority of the population of Ukraine. He apologized to the Ukrainian people for not having enough strength to keep stability and for allowing lawlessness in this country. He vowed to return to Ukraine as soon as there are guarantees for my security and that of my family. He insisted he had not instructed Ukrainian forces to shoot at Euromaidan protesters. He did not take part in the 2014 Ukrainian presidential election since he believed they are unlawful. He said he was surprised by the silence of Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, on the events in Ukraine. He hoped to find out more on Russia's position when he meets with Mr. Putin as soon as he has time. The Issue of Russian Military Intervention 2014 Yanukovych claimed eastern Ukraine will rise up as soon as they have to live without any means. On February 28, 2014 the BBC reported him as insisting that military action was unacceptable and as stating that he would not request Russian military intervention. In an interview with the Associated Press and Russian channel NTV of April 2, 2014 Yanukovych called Russia's annexation of Crimea a tragedy. The 2014 Crimean referendum a form of protest and he stated he hopes it will become part of Ukraine again. Yanukovych said he would try to persuade Russian President Vladimir Putin to return Crimea to Ukraine. He squarely blamed the Yatsenyuk government and acting Ukrainian President Oleksandr Turchino for Ukraine's loss of Crimea. He said he gave no orders to open fire on Euromaidan protesters. Yanukovych said, We must set such a task and search for ways to return to Crimea on any conditions, 
so that Crimea may have the maximum degree of independence possible, but be part of Ukraine. March 2014 to December 2021 At a press conference in Rostov-on-Don on March 11, 2014 Yanukovych asked the Ukrainian military to disobey the criminal orders of a band of ultranationalists and neo-fascists. He called the 2014 Ukrainian presidential election illegal, as well as U.S. financial help, since U.S. law allegedly did not allow the support of bandits. Yanukovych stated he would like to ask the Western supporters of the Yatsenyuk government that he referred to as dark powers, have you become blind? Have you forgotten what fascism is, alluding to the fact that several positions in the transitional government went to representatives of the right-wing extremist nationalist group Svoboda, condemned by the EU in 2012. Unlike his February 28 press conference, Yanukovych did not take questions from reporters. On March 28, 2014, Yanukovych asked the Party of Regions to exclude him. He was excluded on March 29 during a party congress along with several senior figures of his regime. On April 13, Yanukovych again gave a press conference in Rostov on Don this time accompanied by former Prosecutor General Viktor Pshinksa and former Interior Minister Vitaly Zakharkenko. On June 13, 2014, Yanukovych released a video message in which he criticized Petro Poroshenko's handling of the unrest in eastern Ukraine, naming it criminal orders to kill people, that causes anger and curse. The mothers who see the death and suffering of their children Russian media had previously reported that Yanukovych, along with his wife, had moved to Sochi. On February 21, 2015, a year after the revolution, Yanukovych gave an interview to Channel One regarding the situation in Ukraine and promised to return to power as soon as he could. On June 18, 2015, Yanukovych was officially deprived of the title of President of Ukraine. On June 22, 2015, Yanukovych was interviewed on BBC Newsnight and he accepted some responsibility for the deaths just before his removal from power. On December 7, 2015, Yanukovych announced his interest in returning to Ukrainian politics. In a February 22, 2017, interview with Christopher Miller of Radio Free Europe, Konstantin Kilinik explained the existence of a peace effort between Russia and Ukraine called the Mariupol Plan in which Viktor Yanukovych would return as president of Russia's illegally controlled regions and Crimea in Ukraine. Andriy Artemenko's peace plan was known as the New Initiative for Peace. On December 30, 2021, Yanukovych filed lawsuits against the Ukrainian parliament at the Kyiv District Administrative Court in a bid to overturn his removal of the constitutional powers as president of Ukraine. 2022 Russian Invasion of Ukraine Russia launched a full scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24, 2022. On March 2, Ukrainska Pravda reported that Ukrainian intelligence sources believed that Yanukovych was currently in Minsk, Belarus, and that it was Russia's intention to declare Yanukovych as president of Ukraine in the event of Russian forces gaining control of Kyiv. Russian forces never gained control over Kyiv since the Russian army abandoned its Kyiv offensive on April 2, 2022. Fraud Case On July 11, 2005, the office of the Donetsk Oblast prosecutor charged Yanukovych with fraud, stemming from alleged irregularities in the way his convictions were expunged 20 years earlier. In 2006, the general prosecutor closed the case due to lack of evidence. In 2006, a criminal charge was filed for official falsifying of documents concerning the quashing of Yanukovych's prior convictions after it was discovered that two documents had been tampered with, including the forgery of a judge's signature in connection with one charge of battery. On January 29, 2010, the Prosecutor General of Ukraine Alexander Medvedko claimed that Yanukovych had been unlawfully jailed in his youth. A warrant for Yanukovych's arrest was issued on February 24, 2014, by the interim government, accusing him of the mass murder of protesters. 
Acting Ukrainian Interior Minister Arsen Avakov declared that Yanukovych had been placed on Ukraine's most wanted list and that a criminal case for the mass killings of civilians had been opened against him. On February 28, 2014, the General Prosecutor of Ukraine, Oli Maknitki, formally asked Russia to extradite Yanukovych. Russian prosecutors stated that they had not received such a request from Ukraine. To date, Russia has declined to extradite him. Due to the Crimean crisis he was put on the U.S. sanction list on March 17, 2014, an action which had been already previously been considered. After the Euromaidan events the general prosecutor opened at least four new criminal cases against the former president of Ukraine. This included multiple cash payments to a number of Ukraine's top officials which were investigated as suspected bribes. The payments totaled $2 billion over years, ranging from $500,000 to $20 million paid in cash. The recipients included ministers, heads of agencies, Verkhovna Rada members, civic activists, representatives of international organizations, top judges, including those of the Supreme Administrative Court and the Constitutional Court, and the Central Election Commission. Yukartalikom case on September 30, 2014, the general prosecutor of Ukraine opened a new case against Yanukovych for using 220 million of state money to establish his own private communication company based on Yukartalikom. The prosecutor's office also considered that Yanukovych was helped by former government officials Mykola Azarav, Yuri Kolobov, Anatoly I. Markovsky, Hennady Reznikov, and Janik. Signing of the Kharkiv Treaty Beginning in the summer of 2014, the prosecutor's office investigated Yanukovych's signing of the Kharkiv Treaty, which allowed the Black Sea Fleet to stay in Ukraine for an additional 25 years. Yanukovych is being charged with abuse of power and state treason that are being investigated since April 2014 as well as the new procedure on creation of criminal organization that is being investigated since the summer. Mass Murder at Maidan Accusations of mass murder at Maidan included a group of criminal code articles including an attempt to relocate a headquarters of Supreme Commander-in-Chief, National Bank, and Foreign Ministry to Sevastopol as well as Yanukovych's statements about the illegitimacy of higher state authorities after his overthrow. Property Theft Through Conspiracy Yanukovych is also charged with property theft in a conspiracy with the chairman of the Nadra Ukraini State Company, which has been under investigation since March 2014. Interpol For several years, Interpol refused to place Viktor Yanukovych on the wanted list as a suspect by the new Ukrainian government for the mass killing of protesters during Euromaidan. However, on January 12, 2015, Viktor Yanukovych was listed by Interpol as wanted by the judicial authorities of Ukraine for prosecution slash to serve a sentence on charges of misappropriation, embezzlement, or conversion of property by malversation, if committed in respect of an especially gross amount, or by an organized group. On July 16, 2015, some Russian media reported that Interpol had suspended its red notice for Yanukovych. According to the Ukrainian Interpol office, this was a temporary measure due to Yanukovych's complaints that the charges were politically motivated. Interpol later confirmed that Yanukovych and Alexandra Yanukovych were no longer subject to an Interpol red notice or diffusion, and that they are unknown on Interpol's databases. Interpol's action followed an application to Interpol by Joseph Hage Aronson on behalf of Yanukovych seeking his removal from the Interpol wanted list as according to the law firm, the criminal charges brought by the Ukrainian government against Yanukovych were part of a pattern of political persecution of him. In 2017, Yanukovych's son was removed from Interpol's wanted list. Treason Trial In November 2016, Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko questioned Yanukovych via video link in connection with the former Burkut. During the questioning, Lutsenko told Yanukovych that he was being accused of treason. On March 14, 2017, 
the Prosecutor General submitted to court documents of the Yanukovych's case on state treason. Yanukovych was charged with encroachment on the territorial integrity and inviolability of Ukraine, high treason, and complicity in aggressive warfare by the Russian Federation aimed at altering Ukraine's state borders. More than 100 witnesses were interviewed for the case. One was Denis Voronenkov, who was shot dead in downtown Kyiv at the end of March 2017. On May 4, 2017, the first preliminary session commenced in Kyiv's Obolinskyi District Court under Judge Vladislav Dvyatko. Yanukovych was not present and was tried in absentia. He testified via video link from Russia. In closing arguments on August 16, Prosecutors Ruslan Kravkenko and Maxim Krym asked the court in Kyiv to sentence the former leader to 15 years in prison. The judge then adjourned the trial until 13 September. However, the former leader was hospitalized in Moscow days before he was scheduled to give the final statement. Yanukovych was taken to Moscow's Sklifosovsky Institute of Emergency Medicine by ambulance on November 16 in an immobilized condition. He allegedly sustained back and knee injuries while playing tennis. On January 24, 2019, a panel of three judges of the Obolinsky I District Court found Yanukovych guilty of high treason and complicity in Russian military intervention in Ukraine. They stated that the court, having heard the testimony of witnesses, examined conclusions of experts, documents, and material evidence, assessed the arguments of prosecution and defense considers that the guilt of the accused in committing the crimes under Part 1 Article 111, Part 5 Article 27, Part 2 Article 437 of the Criminal Code of Ukraine is duly proved by relevant and admissible evidence. He was acquitted of the other charge relating to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The verdict was that Yanukovych was sentenced to 13 years of jail in absentia. Academic Degrees the former president's official website stated that he graduated from Donetsk Polytechnic Institute with a major in mechanical engineering, holds a master's degree in international law at the Ukrainian Academy of Foreign Trade and is a member of the Academy of Economic Sciences of Ukraine, PhD in economics. According to the Russian website ua.sbinform.ru, from December 2000 to February 2004, while in the position of Ukrainian Prime Minister, Yanukovych headed the Faculty of Innovative Management. At the Donetsk State University of Management. Yanukovych's Curriculum Vitae, published at website europarl.europa.eu, states he is a Doctor of Economics, Professor, full member of the Academy of Economic Sciences of Ukraine, member of the Presidium of the National Academy of Sciences in Ukraine. Website Pravda.com.ua reported that Yanukovych received the honorary title of docent of the Faculty of Automobile Transport at the Donetsk State Academy of Administration, a tertiary education establishment that specialized in economics and management. Alexandra Zakharov, who studied international law at the Academy of Foreign Trade at the same time as Yanukovych, contended that individual study programs such as Yanukovych's were commonly viewed as a diploma mill for state officials. Awards and Honors Personal Life Yanukovych was married to Lyudmyla Alexandrovna Nastenko. The couple married in 1971. With his wife Yanukovych had two sons, Alexander and Victor, and three grandsons Victor, Alexander and Ilya. From 2006 to 2014, the younger Victor was a member of the Parliament of Ukraine, he died by drowning at Lake Baikal in 2015. In February 2017, Yanukovych admitted that after 45 years of marriage he had divorced Lyudmyla. Ukrainska Pravda claims that during the Yanukovych presidency, his wife Lyudmyla lived separately in Donetsk. After the start of the Russo-Ukrainian War she reportedly moved to Crimea. Until 2004, Yanukovych was known as Basia among his family members, but since that time he became leader. 
Yanukovych himself stated that his ex-wife did not wish for her grandson to pick up the bad habits of his grandfather, but Yanukovych did not specify what kind of habits those were. In March 2012, Yanukovych stated it was a problem for him in 2002 to speak Ukrainian but that once I had the opportunity to speak Ukrainian, I started to do it with pleasure. Cultural and Political Image Yanukovych was seen by opponents as representing the interests of Ukrainian big business, they pointed out that his campaigns benefited from backing by Ukrainian billionaire Renat Akhmatov. Supporters of Yanukovych pointed out that the Donetsk Oblast secured unprecedented levels of investment during his time in office. Yanukovych drew strong support from Russian speaking Ukrainians in the east of the country. He is disliked and distrusted in western Ukraine. The People's Movement of Ukraine labeled his election on February 10, 2010 as an attack by anti-Ukrainian forces on our state and stated that all possible legal means should be used to prevent the concentration of power in the hands of anti-state politician Yanukovych and his pro-Moscow retinue. On February 16, 2010, Yanukovych issued a statement that read, I can say only one thing to those who anticipate that my presidency will weaken Ukraine that will never happen. Yanukovych refers to himself as Ukrainian. Voters for Yanukovych in 2010 believed he would bring stability and order. They blamed the Orange Revolution for creating broken promises, a dysfunctional economy and political chaos. During the 2010 presidential election campaign Yuri Yakimenko, Director of Political Research at the Razumkov Center, stated, I think he has not just changed on the surface but also in his ideas. In 2004, Yanukovych was seen as outgoing President Leonid Kukma and Russian President Vladimir Putin's protege. Kukma, however, in conversation with United States Ambassador to Ukraine John F. Teft, in a document dated February 2, 2010 uncovered during the United States diplomatic cables leak, called the voters' choice between Yanukovych and Yulia Tymoshenko during the second round of the 2010 presidential election a choice between bad and very bad and praised Arseniy Yatsenyuk, the candidate eliminated in the first round of the election, instead. In another January 2009 cable then ambassador of Ukraine to Russia Kostyantin Grashchenko stated that Putin had a low personal regard for Yanukovych. In another WikiLeaks diplomatic cable, Volodymyr Horbulin, one of Ukraine's most respected policy strategists and former presidential adviser to then-President Viktor Yushchenko, told the United States ambassador to Ukraine John E. Herbst in 2006 that Yanukovych's party of regions was partly composed of pure criminals and criminal and anti-democracy figures. Yanukovych is not known as a great speaker. His native language is Russian, similar to a majority of the population of his power base and native eastern Ukraine. He however, made efforts to speak better Ukrainian. He admitted in March 2012 that it was a problem for him in 2002 to speak Ukrainian. He has made some blunders, however, in Ukrainian since then. For the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election, Yanukovych wrote an autobiography for the Central Election Commission, in which he misspelled his academic degree. Thereafter, he came to be widely referred to with this nickname in opposition media and opponents' speeches. His autobiographic resume of 90 words contains 12 major spelling and grammatical errors. Opponents of Yanukovych made fun of this misspelling and his criminal convictions during the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election campaign and the incident during the campaign in Ivano-Frankivsk when Yanukovych was rushed to hospital after being hit by an egg was a source of ridicule. Other famous blunders by Yanukovych are his claim that Anton Chekhov was a Ukrainian poet in January 2010 forgetting on January 6, 2011 to congratulate the Greek Catholic Ukrainian community, which, along with the rest of the Ukrainian people, celebrates Christmas that day, and confusing Kosovo with Serbia and Montenegro, and North Ossetia with South Ossetia in March 2010. Over the years, 
Yanukovych's proficiency in the Ukrainian language has noticeably improved. Yanukovych stated in November 2009 that he respects all Ukrainian politicians. I have never offended anyone. This is my rule of politics. In spite of this claim, on September 22, 2007, during the 2007 Ukrainian parliamentary election campaign, while delivering a speech in Vinnytsia, he compared Yulia Tymoshenko's performance as prime minister to a cow on ice, most likely referring to her skills and professionalism as a prime minister. Other cases of strong colloquialisms used by Yanukovych include the incident when he called former President Viktor Yushchenko a coward and a babbler, as well as a speech in Donetsk during the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election, when he referred to the electorate of his opponent Yushchenko as goats that make our lives difficult. Later, during TV debates with Yushchenko he explained, I called the traitors goats. According to the Bible, the goat is a traitor, and there are also rams, sheep. After his February 2014 escape to Russia, during his February 28th press conference in Rostov-on-Don, Yanukovych said, Ukraine is our strategic partner. During the same press conference he also broke a pen in an emotional outburst, while trying to apologize to the Ukrainian people. Opinion polls showed that Yanukovych's popularity sank after his election as president in 2010, with polls giving him from 13% to 20% of the votes if a presidential election were to be held in 2012. A public opinion poll taken by sociological group rating gave him 25.1% of the votes in an imaginary February 2013 presidential election. The ambassador of the European Union to Ukraine, Jose Manuel Pinto Teixeira, stated during an April 2012 interview with correspondent that Yanukovych's presidency fell short of expectations. In an overview piece in March 2013, the Ukrainian week claimed that Yanukovych had failed to meet his 2010 election promises. Manafort Consultant In December 2004 Yanukovych and his party of regions hired American political consultant Paul Manafort as an advisor. He continued to serve in that role through the February 2010 Ukrainian presidential election, even as the U.S. government opposed Yanukovych. Manafort's task was to rehabilitate Yanukovych's political career in the aftermath of the Orange Revolution. According the Party of Regions accounting book, Paul Manafort, who after the Orange Revolution provided strong support to Yanukovych, received funds from the Party of Regions via the Belize-based Neocom Systems Limited's account at the Kyrgyzstan-based Asia Universal Bank on October 14, 2009. Manafort hired the public relations firm Edelman to lift Yanukovych's public image. However, Manafort's friends have said that Yanukovych stopped listening to him after he became president in 2010. Manafort warned him of the consequences of extreme political measures. Manafort would later go on to serve as campaign chairman for Donald Trump in 2016. The American FBI began a criminal investigation into Manafort's business dealings while he was lobbying for Yanukovych. American federal prosecutors alleged that between 2010 and 2014, Manafort was paid more than $60 million by Ukrainian sponsors including Renat Akhmatov, believed to be the richest man in Ukraine. In January 2019, Manafort resigned from the Connecticut Bar. See also 2006 Ukrainian Political Crisis 2007 Ukrainian Political Crisis 2010 Ukrainian Presidential Election 2014 Hrushevskaho Street Riots 2021-2022 Russo-Ukrainian Crisis Alliance of National Unity Party of Regions Mezhihirya